Okay, welcome back. We're here live in Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante, again here uh, at, at really one of the most important events happening right now in the world, and that is the, the, the Silicon Valley magic is happening at Open Compute Summit. We're here to dissect it, unpack it, and broadcast all the knowledge and data we, we possibly can. And then our next guest is Executive Director, Open Compute Foundation, Cole Crawford, formerly the co-founder of the OpenStack Foundation. Welcome to theCUBE. You were on uh, stage with Dave on a panel. I got to ask you, I mean, you know, I mean, I have a good vibe here, but explain to the folks out here, what's the magic of open compute? Why is open compute a packed house this year? It really has got some great momentum. Not, not hyped up at all. I mean, you got players here, yeah. real tech athletes, yeah. real heavy hitters, not a lot of vendor influence, so to speak, people trying to change the world. What is your take on that? Explain to the world why that's happening. You know, I think uh, you, can, you can compare why we exist to why America exists. I like to get patriotic every now and again. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, everyone wants to be free, right? Everyone wants to be free. No one wants to be locked in. We got rid of that, you know, when we founded America. And um, if you look at the four fundamental principles of open source, those exact same things apply in hardware as they do in software, right? The ability to look at the code. We've got Gerber files, we've got CAD files, right? The ability to change the code. You can modify this stuff with your, you know, your, uh, your CAD software. The ability to redistribute that code, right? The ability to become a solution provider and let other people do derivative works on that. And the ability to let them do that. So um, there's some just phenomenal freedoms that exist inside of open ecosystems. It hadn't been done well in hardware before, and we think that we've uh, we've nailed that approach. Yeah, so, not just free of charge, right? So we no. love sports analysis: baseball, apple pie, and open compute. So um, <laughs> that's kind of the America dream. Uh, let's stay on that thread for a second, because actually there's a lot of controversy going on around a lot of uh, values, certainly in San Francisco Bay Area right now. You got Google buses being thrown rocks at. You got a venture capitalist kind of went off the deep end recently, talking about the one percent. But innovation comes from community. So I want to ask you specifically this notion of free market, you mentioned America, America's a free market. Some are saying we want to avoid the rigged markets, where it's actually, everything's rigged in advance. You see that with a lot of our yeah. government policy. Yeah. You know, we tried to open up the lo local loop, you know, decades ago, got crushed by the telcos. Um, so let's talk about freedom and free choice and free markets versus rigged. What are you guys doing specifically to keep the magic of, of the innovation from being rigged? Yeah, great question. And I think, you know, the, it, reality television is sort of like guided reality television, right? It's kind of scripted. And I think that a lot of foundations, a lot of open source movements, um, best intentions in the world, sort of end up in a place with the, the traditional model of, you know, hey, here's your, here's the platinum level for X amount of dollars, and with that level comes this vote. Well, that starts, you know, as your, as your, as your community grows, as the foundation grows, as that, as that movement grows, that price increases, and now all of a sudden you've got very wealthy companies contributing to these causes. Uh, the Open Compute Foundation has worked uh, and was, was founded. The laws and the bylaws of our foundation are, are fundamentally different in that um, the most important and strategic position you can have in our ecosystem is, is a project lead position, which is a community elected position. And that's important to know because um, there's, no, uh, there's no pay to play model here, right? And I think people are seeing that um, if you're going to be a relevant strategic player inside of this ecosystem, you're, you're down in the weeds. Right, you're getting your hands dirty and you're working on technology. And I think as, as, we, as we maintain sort of that pace of innovation story, as long as it's a community first and pace of innovation story that we're telling, I think that um, you know, the community's going to be well served and we'll be able to keep that match. How unique is this in your experience uh, when you compare it to you know, OpenStack, one of your babies, yeah. Linux? We talk about that a little bit. And so I was on the foundation formation committee for the OpenStack um, and you know, when, when, when Frank and team came to me and said, hey, we've got this other foundation, this Open Compute Foundation, um, you know, Frank and I both had worked uh, at, a, at a tier one OEM um, and uh, he said, hey, we've got, you know, we're going to do it a little bit different uh, I was I was intrigued, and I think that I think that the way that um, our foundation operates is uh, is unique in that you know there's there's five board members for the Open Compute Foundation, and those five board members are hands off in terms of the technical direction. When you if if you were involved with Open Compute when it first launched, um, you would have seen that everything was about the 21 inch rack. Open rack was the key cornerstone of Open Compute. The power efficiency, all of that lined up very well with Facebook's vision of what that rack should look like. But you know, you've heard today from um, 
uh, from Frank in his keynote about uh, folks like Fidelity, folks like Goldman Sachs. 21 inches doesn't work for them. So we wanted to apply those same design principles and it was community led. This wasn't a board of directors saying, hey, this is the direction we're gonna go and now start coding, right? Get all the engineers and the hackers together to start coding. This was a real consumer of at scale technology saying, you know, this is our pain. We need our own aspirin and we're gonna manufacture it the way that, uh, you know, that we see um, and that'll work for us. We got a, a question from the Twitter sphere out there on crowdchat.net slash OCP Summit V. Uh, for the uh, handle. When do you uh, look at the value of the pay-to-play board seat? When do you kind of give a little bit to get corporate sponsors? Also, you got you to support yourself, you got to run conferences. How do you balance that? That's coming a question from, from folks who love your answer, by the way, and said, hey, we love that, that is the future. Um, how do you govern that and, and, and how do you balance that? So we, we, you know, it's a simple answer. We run very lean. You know, we rely on the community. Facebook dedicates an enormous amount of, of people and our tiered membership model. So we're moving to a tiered membership model soon. It's not, that program's not yet rolled out, um, but it's a reverse model where the more you give us in terms of, of community participation and intellectual property and time, the less you pay for a better trademark. So our gold membership is uh, less expensive than our silver, and our platinum membership is less expensive so than it's our gold. Reward to play. It's reward to play, <laughs> right? It's the it's the complete shift. Uh, you know, it's the opposite shift of, of what's been the hey, traditional. Just start a publishing company. That's tech journalism is a bubble right now. So just start an event. You got an event. You know, throw a blog out there. Next thing you know, you're reporting on the news. That's a good good business model. No, all joking aside, that's a, that's a good answer, and that people want to know uh, that. And so the transparency is what the blog. How are you guys communicating that? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're very transparent. Um, you know, the, the board meetings are, um, the, the minutes of those board meetings are generally published. The, the incubation committee, where sort of things get voted, uh, those are, anybody can attend over the phone. Um, the, we've got a mailing list, you know, all the, the usual suspects in terms of technology that you can um, uh, interact with the ecosystem blog, mailing list. We've hired a, a great community manager, Amber Grainer. She comes from Lenaro, another nonprofit. Um, so we, you know, we try and be as open and as transparent as we can be. And you, you see, you know, even, even Microsoft joining the foundation, um, they had released information prior to them announcing here, which is a huge marketing benefit, right? Yeah. Cole, I got to ask you about the, as I'm on this whole 30th anniversary of the Apple Macintosh, I was at the event in uh, Cupertino on Saturday. It was really a great event. Went down there, labor of love. I love, it's my generation of programmers. Um, and it was just great to see the celebration. They're hardware geeks, man. They're totally, you know, <laughs> old school hardware guys. But now we're in a modern era, so I got to ask you, if you just shoot the arrow forward, go back from the original Mac, those days of Homebrew Computer Club, you have open source now evolution, you got Apache, you've got all these different communities, all with their own taste of flavor. It's almost like fraternity row for open source. This one does that, that's the, you know, different kind of mode and mojo, each mojo. But now, with open compute, you guys are, to me, what a homebrew club would look like in a modern era. Big, big innovation, access to the cloud seems to be the, the holy grail. Computers wanted the data center. So, you know, so now we're, we're, we're changing the game. What do you look for? What kind of magic are you anticipating or you hope to see of the Open Compute Summit, the kind of magic that disrupted the PC and created the PC revolution. Um, is it an Amazon clone more than that? I mean, what are you hoping to see? Well, I think, you know, um, hardware is irrelevant without the workload that runs on it. So if you've got, you know, if you're interested in cloud or if you're interested in big data, there's a ton of open source software that you can apply to Open Compute. We've got an entire program dedicated to making sure OpenStack and Hadoop and these, you know, these uh, various open source software projects run really well on our open source hardware. Um, and that's, a, that's, you know, that's sort of a, a defining moment in enterprise uh, IT and at scale IT, because for the first time, you can actually go and individually select the components of, of um, robust open source technology that you want to deploy in your data centers to, to fit um, the workload that's important to you. You, know, you heard Frank mention um, a mile wide and an inch deep versus being a mile deep and an inch wide. And if you take the workload and you, you work backwards, I think, you know, yeah, we are hackers, right? And we're, we're, we're working backwards, but I think that's the right model. I, I believe that <clears throat> if Linus Torvalds today was writing Linux, he'd say, hey, I've got this thing that I'm going to write, and guess what? You can port it to any architecture you want because it's all open. 
Yeah, and that's different from the time then. They were trying to get around the Suns and the HP UXs of the world, the that's licenses, right. as George Schlesman from I.O. is saying, he pays zero license. So there's different, different conditions, you're saying. Exactly, it's a different playing field. So we've got a question, from, again, from the crowd chat uh, from uh, uh, an audience member. Ask Cole the biggest lessons learned in his participation in other open source projects, lessons learned, applied here, I can only assume he's talking about OpenStack where you were a co-founder and other environments you've been involved. So what are your biggest lessons that you can apply here to open compute that you won't either, maybe there are mistakes you wish you could do over or successes you're going to amplify on, double down on. What can you share your perspective? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, lessons learned is interesting. I think, I think everything is a lesson learned and I want to I wanna go uh, out and, you know, for the record say we love OpenStack. We love the OpenStack Foundation. We love the Linux Foundation. This is a heterogeneous open source community that couldn't function in silos, so we have to be working together. Um, you know, I think uh, personally for me, I, I, I want to be a champion for the consumer of technology. Again, you saw a slide earlier about, you know, a bottleneck uh, between technology and the consumption of technology, and I think that if we remove those types of barriers, you know, we can get to the type of infrastructure that solves cancer. We can get to the type of infrastructure that, you know, is processing uh, 100 zettabytes of, of data in a year and, and coming out with you know, relevant uh, uh, big data. Um, big data by itself is just data, right? I said that earlier. Relevant big data is what's important to us and I think um, you know, the, the type of scale infrastructure that we're going to need, we probably don't even have that yet today, right? We're going to need disaggregation. We're going to need um, uh, you know, SOCs. We're going to need uh, multi-architecture multi -architecture platforms to run a number of different specific workloads on. Um, and I think as long as you put the consumer first, as long as we're being champions for the consumer, then we're going we're gonna to be in a good spot. So let's talk about disaggregation. There was a lot of talk last year at this event about disaggregation. Uh, from, a, from a consumer's perspective, why is disaggregation important? And, and then the other observation, it's not really a criticism, but the other observation about OCP is it's designed for mega scale only, it doesn't scale down. I wonder if you could address that as well. But start with disaggre disaggregation. Yeah. Why is that important for the consumer? So, uh, so, so Patton, uh, General Patton once said, we're getting patriotic again, he once said, fixed fortifications are a monument to the stupidity of man. <laughs> and I think, you know, through disaggregation, uh, you end up being able to, yeah, you've got your, your fixed data center, right? But you also have um, this eventually consistent ecosystem or this eventually consistent data center that um, with the, you know, the future backplanes and the future uh, MPLS circuits, you know, the layer two uh, data center interconnects that are going to be coming out in the next, you know, five, 10 years, we're going to see bandwidth that, that we just don't see today. You're going to see replication happening much faster. We're going to need to, right, with the amount of data that we're processing in the distributed object stores uh, and the dist uh, distributed storage that we're having to deal with, you're going to see eventual consistency play a major role in, uh, in the future data center. And uh, um, I think disag is important because no longer are you going to be, you know, you're going to be forced to rack capacity, not rack servers. Racking, the days of racking servers are, are over, if not you know, the, uh, a short-lived uh, reality. Um, the, the ability to rack- Racking rack stack is a dead end, is essentially what you're exactly saying. That's exactly right, right? You need to be thinking about racking racks, not racking servers. Um, that's the new world that racking we're Racking data centers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, we're going to put that data center, let's put it on top of the other data center. <laughs> um, I was talking to George Schlesman, I think the future is shipping data centers, not yep. servers. And that, that is the future, and as things get more containerized and smaller. So what about, what about that, uh, it's sort of a soft criticism, right? It's a, uh, on, it's me, for mega scale OCP, but not, not scaled down. Is, is that true, is it a problem? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's true or a problem, right? I think um, we're, at this, we're at this place where uh, we're, the, the, you know, the, the world is our oyster effectively, right? The data center, as we move into, um, you know, bigger and broader data centers, uh, power efficiency is just massively important. And, you know, we're going to, the, the IOs of the world are, are sort of leading the charge. I mean, these are bleeding edge technologies that they're adopting. But, you know, you look at open source, and, and the ability for George to do a live demo on an iPhone, deploying OpenStack on open compute, 
um, you know, I think that's I think that's the future. Uh, he said it. I yeah. agree. Yeah, and I think you know, you know, a lot of things. You, you you kind of were, were giving an answer about OpenStack earlier, like you love them, like almost like you feel like people are almost implying that Open Compute is competing with OpenStack. I don't think I've ever said that. I don't see that. I see this as a symbiotic relationship. Yep. What it gets done in the engine. And yep. certainly at the hardware level, as it gets shrinks and gets more performance, and, and with software virtualization, network virtualization, we all know the benefits there. This is a boom, boon for OpenStack. I mean, absolutely. This is absolutely. And they're a boon for us, frankly, right? I mean, it's, uh, it, uh, Graham Weston, uh, the, the chairman of, of Rackspace, said uh, he, he compared OpenStack and Open Compute to peanut butter and jelly. So, you know, I, and I think that that relationship really does apply, at least, at least in terms of, if you, if, you, if you look at cloud, which is a major at-scale workload for a number of managed service providers, a number of telecommunication companies, a number of um, you know, big data companies, um, if you take all of the goodness of open source software and open source cloud that OpenStack brings, and you take all the goodness of the sort of that open API at the hardware level that Open Compute brings, you, know, you, you heard George say it. Yeah. There is not a single license fee that they pay to be able to deliver that experience to their customer. Well, we love cloud, and one of the things you'll see from SiliconANGLE Wikibon this year is a lot of cloud coverage. We don't really kind of toot our own horn. I'd say that we kick ass in cloud. We're pretty badass. We know a lot about cloud. I gotta, so I got to ask you, in the cloud conversation, you, all the suspects are there, but you don't see in the mainstream press yet Facebook. So they have a huge cloud. It's called their application, yeah. called Facebook. Yeah. Um, the SaaS is their application, and they're a big part of this environment. So you know, speculation aside of what they will or may not do in the future relative to being an Amazon competitor, um, that's to be another day. But I want to talk about their role here, right? Facebook's role with the Open Compute project. Um, how is it evolving going forward? And two, the second part of the question is your take on Amazon, because Amazon, in a way, has replicated kind of in their own way, build their own gear. Uh, they make their own, they, don't, they source everything and build it in house, smaller footprints, the density's tiny. Um, they are their own version of open compute. Yep. In a way, the, the gold standard today. So, so these are two massive market whales out there. And, and John, uh, James Hamilton, you asked James Hamilton the question at reInvent, what about OCP? Oh, we love OCP. Yeah, and, yeah, but it doesn't quite do it for us. So, yeah. It's an interesting discussion. So, so right? this I mean, is kind of converging together. You got you know, the two whales out there. Yeah. And Google's you know, obviously sitting in the wings looking down, probably going to, you know, what's that old Joe? I won't go there. But go ahead. Talk about Facebook, their role, and then the, the Amazon kind of, I guess. Yeah, the horses on the track. I mean, so, how do you look yeah, at all yeah. that? Yeah, so you know, uh, with regard to Facebook, I can't, I can't really comment because I've never been a Facebook employee. Um, you know, obviously, they're involved in the project, but, but no different than... Uh, no different than Goldman Sachs is involved or Fidelity is involved. Obviously, they're big consumers of open compute. And like Rackspace, you know, I would compare Facebook to Rackspace in that they came up with this neat thing, right? Rackspace had OpenStack, uh, a combination of NASA, um, and, and Facebook had open compute. So altruistically, they did the same thing that Rackspace did. So I would put them in sort of that, you know, um, altruistic creator. They're a leader um, too. I mean, they're and, and leading obviously and a leader, they're right? catalyst and right. Okay. Definitely, they 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 lead and they. If you look at how much yeah. um, they buy a boatload of machines, they. I just tweeted. They saved them 1.2 billion dollars this year. Yeah. Um, Jay was just on stage. That's on the on the Twitter sphere and the crowd chat. So, I mean, obviously they're huge. Huge consumers too, huge. right? I mean, they're, 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 the the Lulia data center is a, is a massive open compute data center. So, um, if you look again, if you're looking at at the consumer first, Facebook being a consumer of technology, they want to get to you know the most uh, so there's a, there's a metric in data centers uh, called PUE, Power Utilization Effectiveness, and they sure. want to be the most efficient they can be because that's how you get you know, your better TCO. Uh, your, your, um, that's something where you do want to be 1.0. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. You do want to be 1.0 there. And uh, you know, there's, there's numbers published from, uh, from Facebook of 1.07. Yeah, I've seen numbers closer ridiculous. to 1.03, yeah. so, uh, though unpublished. <laughs> so that is massively efficient hardware. Um, you know, and, and just on the comment about uh, uh, Amazon and, and Google, I'll just say this. We believe that anybody that thinks differentiating in hardware is uh, a value proposition to, their, to themselves is doing it wrong. You know, I was talking about uh, the Mac thing, go back to the game, because it's so fresh in my brain, because this is such a parallel to me. Bill Atkinson said, we built the Mac for ourselves. In a way, Facebook is building open compute for themselves. Um, so this is why the magic is happening here, in my opinion. This is the industry saying, we want better, 
faster, yep. right? So do you agree with that statement? And can you give some other examples yeah, of people it, building there for themselves? Sure, uh, again, let's, let's take Fidelity and Goldman Sachs, right? Building for themselves. We start out as a 21 inch rack standard, Goldman Sachs, and you look at the, you look at the, um, the financial services industry in general, and these guys are bleeding edge adopters. Look at the Linux kernel. They were responsible for, for the real-time kernel. Like these guys were the catalyst for creating the real-time kernel in Linux. Um, that same thing exists here. They've got, they've got um, real estate close to Wall Street with fiber connections where, where millions of dollars are the difference between microseconds um, for trading, you know, for high frequency trading. And they say, you know, we can't deploy 21 inch racks because we've got this uh, co-located facility. The power requirements are so vastly different than what we operate today. We love the principles. We want the technology. We want to be able to build what we need to build for us, but we need to do it in this, in this, uh, with this constraint. Cole Crawford, the executive director of Open, Open Compute Foundation, formerly the co-founder of OpenStack. Great uh, guest here, great innovator, uh, great person to have uh, driving the community with the, with the team. Uh, his uh, Twitter handle is Cole in the Cloud, at Cole in the Cloud. Uh, thanks so much, good luck. Congratulations on the fantastic event. You got lightning in a bottle here. Um, <laughs> don't screw it up. Uh, no, seriously, uh, have, a, have a great show. We love it, we're big proponents. They're building the future for themselves. This is the community of OCP, Open Compute Project. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>